Hello, in this video, I'm gonna give you 10 tips. That's 10 simple things that you can do to your central heating and hot water, which is gonna make them more efficient, which means you use less gas, saving energy, which is gonna put more money back in your pockets. Now I go into hundreds of people's homes each year and I readily find that the radiators, the central heating, the hot water settings aren't really set to their most efficient settings. And I generally find that people don't really like to touch them or they don't know what they should be setting them to or how to adjust them. And that's especially so if you've had a new boiler fitted which has an all digital display. Now each of these tips will save energy, which will reduce that gas bill. Now, as I was making this video, I thought of a whole bunch of other tips on things which you can do, which would definitely save you some energy. So at the end of the video, there's a whole bunch of bonus tips, along with that question, which I regularly get asked, which is, which is more efficient to keep my heating on all day long or to set it on a timer? Also at the end, I'm gonna briefly talk to you about the Drayton Wiser system and their smart, thermostatic radiator valves, which I see are gonna be the future for our central heating systems because they have the ability to save us a considerable amount of energy on our heating bills. Now this video has taken a lot longer to make than I thought it's going to, and it does last a little bit longer than I wanted it to, but I do hope that you find it useful because I know every tip will save you money and energy, putting more money back in your pockets. So if you do like it, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up. And of course, click on that subscribe and ring the bell if you want to receive a notification the next time I make a help video. And please share this video with your friends. So put it on your Facebook, on your Instagram, on any other social media you may have, and then everyone's gonna save a little bit of energy, make the planet a little bit greener, and then put some more money back in our pockets. If you do find any of my tips useful, then there is always my toolbox fund where you can buy me a cup of coffee and leave a little donation. That is always really appreciated and it does really help me to make more videos, which will hopefully help you. Right, now let's get on with the video and get on to tip number one. And it's a pretty obvious one. It's just to turn down your room thermostat. Or if you've got a digital one, just drop the temperature by a degree or a couple of degrees. And obviously put a jumper on or something and you're definitely gonna save yourself some money. Now they do say that you will save 80 pounds a year if you just turn your thermostat down by one degrees. Now I'm not gonna say you're gonna save 80 pounds because every house is gonna be different, but you will definitely save yourself some money by just turning that thermostat down a little bit. Now just sticking with the room thermostat, thermostats there are thousands of homes out there which don't have a room thermostat and I regularly go into people's homes and they say to me I have thermostatic radiator valves on all my radiators and I don't need a room thermostat well I'm afraid you've been misinformed it's been a building regulation for a really long time to have a room thermostat and since 2018 it's been law to have a timer and the room thermostat fitted with every new boiler and that's because it's really inefficient not to have one. Now to help you understand how your central heating works and why you should have a room thermostat, I'll quickly go through it on this whiteboard. Now this is a very rough drawing of your central heating system. Here we have your boiler, then we've got some radiators, maybe upstairs, some radiators downstairs, and maybe you've got a radiator which hasn't got a thermostat on. Then these radiators all have thermostatic radiator valves on. Now you're gonna say to me, I've got thermostatic radiator valves and they turn off the radiators, so I don't need a room thermostat. So let's just say all these rooms have got the temperature and these thermostats have now turned off. Now this radiator might have a thermostat on or it might be turned off, but it doesn't really matter. So now all your heating is turned off, right? No, wrong. All your radiators might be turned off, but it hasn't turned off your boiler. So the pump's gonna keep on running and then every now and again, the boiler's gonna cool down and then the flame's gonna come on heating up your boiler, the pump's gonna stay running, the boiler's gonna cool down, and then it's gonna heat up again, and around and around it goes. And yet the house doesn't warm up because all the radiators are turned off. But the boiler doesn't know that, and so it's gonna keep on turning on and off all the time you have your heating turned on. Now this is where the room thermostat comes in. So when you have a room thermostat, and you say set that to 21 degrees, like that, when your house gets to 21 degrees, it's then gonna turn the boiler off. Once the boiler's off, the flame's not gonna come back on and the pump will stop running. Even if the thermostats on the radiators open back up again, the radiators won't come back on until that room thermostat drops in temperature, turns the boiler back on, and then the house will warm back up again. Hopefully you can now see that it's really inefficient not to have a room thermostat. And don't forget by not having a room thermostat, you're also adding additional wear to your boiler and your pump and anything else that may be running. Not to mention the additional gas you're gonna be using. 
and that's why it's a building regulation to have one. And these days it's really easy to fit one because you can get all these wireless controls like this Honeywell DT92E. This is a wireless room thermostat and the receiver unit just wires into your boiler or your controls. And then you can take the thermostat anywhere you like in the house. So that was tip number one, turn down your room thermostat. I thought I'd just quickly add, don't forget to visit my website where I've categorized all my videos and you'll find links to all the products and parts that I recommend. So tip number two, thermostatic radiator valves. If you've got those fitted on your radiators, you can turn those down just a little bit more and that's gonna save you some energy. So I would suggest the room which you live in most of the time, you can obviously keep that one turned up because you don't wanna to be too cold in there, but all the other rooms, you can turn those thermostats down a little bit and that's gonna save you some energy. And in rooms which aren't being used, if you've got a spare room, then you can turn that one right down low or even turn it off. And that's definitely gonna save you some energy on your heating bills. So that was tip number two, turn down your thermostatic radiator valves just a little bit. So tip number three is very similar to tip number two. So if you don't have thermostatic radiator valves fitted on your radiators, you can still turn those radiators down. So or we'll turn them off if you've got a room where it's not being used. So on your radiator, you should have a lock shield valve on one end, and then on the other end, you should have a wheel head. And then you can turn that wheel head valve down and you can turn it right down so it's off, uh, or you can just turn it off and then turn it back open by half a turn. That way you'll get a little bit of water going through the radiator and then that'll just keep that radiator lukewarm instead of being really hot. And that will save you some energy. Now, just a little word of warning. If you haven't turned the radiator valve for a very long time, then there's a chance that when you turn it, it may start leaking and then you may have to call someone out to come and repair your radiator valve. Now, if you do have a radiator valve that start leaking, of course, I have made a video about how to repair a radiator valve, and obviously you can find that in the cards now or down in the description. Now, on this particular valve, all I need to do is to nip up the gland nut. It's gonna stop this valve from leaking, but not every valve has this gland nut. So that was tip number three, close down any radiators which aren't being used. Now, if you find any other way of saving some energy on your hot water and central heating bills, then leave a little message down in the comments for everyone to see. And of course, if you disagree with anything I'm saying, then again, leave a little message down in the comments. And that way we can all help to save ourselves a little bit more energy and then try and reduce those gas bills and put a little bit more money back in our pockets. So tip number four, staying with the radiators. If you have a radiator that is hot at the bottom and it's cold at the top, then it means you have air in the radiator and that makes the radiator way less efficient. It also makes your boiler less efficient because the water going through the radiator does not cool down correctly and the water then goes back to the boiler at a higher temperature, which makes the boiler less efficient. So we wanna bleed the radiators to get the air out. So here's my radiator and I can tell it needs bleeding because it's cold at the top here and it's hot down here. That means there's a little bit of air in the top here which just needs to be bled out. And we do that through this bleed valve here. Now I've got a little bit of tissue here to catch the water when it comes out. And I've also got my bleed key. Now with these little white things on the end here, these turn and there's a hole in the end there to let the water out. So you just take your bleed key, put it into the bleed valve and turn it and open in your valve. And then you hear some hissing and you get a bit of water dripping out possibly and just keep waiting for the water to come out and just catch any drips. Now it's a really good idea to put a towel down when you do this because it is easy just to uh, spill water on the floor and you don't want it going on your carpet because it can be very dirty. So make sure you protect your carpet. And there you go, that's it. The water's come out, shut the valve again, dry up any little drips and there you go. So your radiator will be hot to the top now. And then the radiator will then be full of water and it will be far more efficient and be a lot hotter and keep your house a lot warmer. Now, just a little word of warning. If you have a combination boiler or you have a sealed pressurized system, when you go bleeding your radiators, you're gonna drop the pressure on your system and then your boiler may stop working. So before you go bleeding radiators, make sure that you know how to top your boiler back up again. Now, what I suggest you do is before you go bleeding radiators, go and top your boiler up a bit or your system, just open the valves up, make sure you see the pressure rise and then close the valves again. Then go around, bleed all your radiators and then go back to your boiler and check your pressure and top it back up again if it's needed. So that was tip number four, bleeding radiators, which is gonna make your system more efficient and again, save you some energy. So tip number five, again, sticking with the radiators and that's balancing your system. 
then I find very rarely that when I go into a person's home that the system is balanced correctly. Now what balancing does is it makes the system way more efficient, especially if you have a new high efficiency condensing boiler. So balancing the system is pretty straightforward. I'm going to show you what you're trying to do on the whiteboard and then I'm going to go through it on the radiators. And then hopefully you're going to make your central heating system way more efficient and more comfortable around the home. So what is balancing? Well, here's a central heating system. We have a boiler here. We have a couple of radiators here and a tile rail and they're all upstairs. And then we have some more radiators downstairs and they could be double panels or single panels. What we want to happen is our central heating system to heat up evenly all the way across the system. As the radiators cool down, the water then returns back to the boiler at a much lower temperature, which will make the boiler way more efficient. Now the water being pumped out of your boiler is always going to take the shortest route. If it's easiest for it to go through this radiator here, which is right next to the boiler, then that's what it's going to do. So it's going to come out your boiler, whiz through this radiator and then return back to the boiler at virtually the same temperature that it's left the boiler at, which is really inefficient for the boiler because the water's not going to want to come out the boiler, go down to these pipes down here, through all the pipes, through the elbows, and then finally get to this radiator here, then go through that radiator, and then it's got to come all the way back again. So the water will always take the shortest route and whiz around this radiator if it can. Now the idea of balancing is to stop it from whizzing around this radiator here and force it to go to these other radiators, where it can cool down properly, then return back to the boiler at a much lower temperature. Now I have this temperature measuring device and it means I can check these temperatures very accurately. In the ideal situation, we are looking to try and get between 20 and 11 degrees drop in temperature as the water goes through the central heating system. Now you can see on my display right here, it says that T1, that's the flow temperature, is 47.4 degrees. And T2, which is the water returning back to the boiler, is 37.1 degrees. So this radiator is losing 10 degrees of heat into the house. Ideally, that temperature difference should be more. So I could try closing the lock shield just a little bit more. In my experience, it's virtually impossible to get a 20 degrees drop in temperature across a radiator. Not unless you don't mind your radiator feeling cold in the middle or you have a really massive radiator. Now, obviously, you're not going to have a temperature measuring device like I have, but you don't need one. All you need to do is to feel the difference in temperature between your two pipes. Use the same hand, feel one pipe, then feel the other pipe. If you can't feel a difference in temperature between the two pipes, then the water is going through the radiator too fast. And you want to go to the lock shield and just turn it down a little. And then you want to wait a little while, then come back to the radiator and check it again. The best time to do this is first thing in the morning when your heating first comes on, when everything is cold. If you have thermostatic radiator valves, make sure that they are fully open, not half closed. Because if they're not fully open and half closed, then they will affect how the system balances and then will not be balancing the system correctly. So make sure they're fully open. Now that was a quick description on how to balance your system. Now, if you do want more information about balancing your system, then of course you find the video in the links below. So that was tip number five, balancing your system. So tip number six, moving on to your boiler. Now I find that my customers very rarely touch the controls on the front of the boiler and I don't really know what any of them do. So I'm gonna show you what they do and how you can adjust them. And that's gonna make your boiler way more efficient. And again, save you money and put money back in your pocket. Now these next three tips are for combination boilers only. So if you have a boiler that heats up a large hot water tank, then these tips aren't for you. And you can skip to tip number nine if you want to, but they still may be useful to you. Now every combination boiler and manufacturer have a slightly different display. And some of them have knobs you can turn, some of them have digital displays with buttons, and the new boilers are now coming out and they're all touch screen. But there are three controls on the boiler which we wanna check and change to make the boiler more efficient. Because if they're set incorrectly, you are wasting a whole heap of money. I'm gonna go through those controls and hopefully set them up with you so you can make your boiler way more efficient and again, put more money back in your pockets. Now the first control we're going to look at is the temperature of your central heating. Now this temperature doesn't adjust how hot your house gets, that's the job of your room thermostat, but how hot your radiators get. 
which in turn will affect how hot your house gets. So we're looking for the control that's got a radiator symbol next to it, and that's gonna adjust our temperature of our central heating. Now the recommended temperature to set your central heating to is 65 degrees. And you'll find our symbol is these days on the heating control, there's a little E on the panel, and then you can set the dial to that E, and then that temperature would be around about 65 degrees. But we can still adjust this temperature and make the boiler more efficient. And all new modern combination boilers, the lower we can set this temperature to, the more efficiently the central heating will run at. So we can adjust this temperature down and the lower we can get this setting, the more efficiently our central heating is gonna run at. But it also means that the radiators will be cooler and it's gonna take longer for the house to warm up. And in the winter, if you set that temperature down too low, your house just won't get warm enough. And then you're gonna to need to adjust that temperature back up again. And that's why they say 65 degrees is a pretty good temperature for all year round. Now you can set this temperature right up to say 75 or even 80 degrees, and that's gonna make your radiators really, really hot, and it's gonna make your house heat up really quickly, but it's also really inefficient. So we do wanna try and set this temperature to around about 65 degrees and if you can turn it down a little bit lower then your heating will run more efficiently but just remember when it gets really cold you might just need to turn that temperature back up a little bit so that was tip number six adjusting your heating temperature so tip number seven adjusting your hot water temperature now depending on what boiler you have depends on how you adjust the temperature of your hot water on the new valiant boilers you have a digital display and you push the button underneath the picture of a tap then you can adjust the temperature by pressing the plus and minus buttons and then we have to press the tick button to save that setting on this ideal boiler you have a nice easy round dial and you just turn the dial around adjusting the temperature and you can see when I turn the dial around, the temperature changes in the display, indicating the temperature we are setting our hot water to. Now, just a quick note, some older combination boilers don't actually have any control for the hot water, so you can't adjust it. So if you can't see a dial on the front of your boiler to adjust your hot water temperature, then it just may be that you don't have one. I am talking about very old combination boilers that don't have this control. All new combination boilers are gonna have some way of adjusting the hot water temperature. So if you can't see a dial or you're not sure how to do it, then look up on your instructions and you can find all instructions today online. So have a look and find out how you adjust that temperature of your hot water. So why should you adjust your temperature of your hot water? Well, there's absolutely no point in heating your hot water up to a really high temperature, then to just cool it down at the tap with some cold water. You're just wasting gas, adding to your energy bill, you're wearing your boiler out, you're adding scale to your plate heat exchanger, which means that the plate heat exchanger may need to be changed earlier than it needs to be. And of course you're adding to climate change. So what temperature should you be setting your hot water to? Well, 50 degrees seems to be a pretty good average temperature. But if you find this is still a little hot, then just adjust the temperature down a little bit more. Having said all that, there are a couple of occasions where you may want to have your hot water a little bit hotter. One reason is for your shower. If you have a mixer shower which runs off your hot and your cold water, then you may find if the water is not hot enough, when you turn your shower up, you can't get your shower as hot as you would like it. In that instance, you may need to have your hot water set a little higher. Now, most showers can be adjusted manually inside, but you would need the instructions to do this. Now, another reason you may want your hot water set a little higher is if you like having really hot baths and also topping your bath up with hot water. In that instance, you may also want your hot water set a little higher. Now, I have some customers who tell me that when they want to have a nice hot bath, they turn the temperature of the hot water up and then when they finish having their bath, they then turn the temperature of the hot water back down again. That is an excellent way of saving energy and also minimizing the wear to your boiler. A really good tip to try doing that if you like to have a really nice long soak in a hot bath. So that was tip number seven, adjusting your hot water temperature. So moving on to tip number eight, preheat or warm start or comfort eco whatever the manufacturers want to call it this is a setting where the boiler will keep itself warm or preheated all through the day and the night when you're not using the boiler so that when you turn your hot tap on it doesn't take very long for the water to come out of the tap just a quick note not every boiler will have this function 
So if you're at work all day or maybe just don't use any hot water all through the day and you're definitely not going to use it at night, but your boiler is still going to be firing up. It's going to keep itself hot around about 50 degrees so that when you turn your hot tap on, it doesn't take long for your water to come out of the tap. Now this function that can be useful maybe if your ball is in an outhouse or it's in a loft or if you're on a water meter. Just bear in mind if your boiler is in a loft or an outhouse then it's going to be colder and it's going to be bringing on the preheat more often keeping itself pre-warmed at 50 degrees. I thought I'd just point out that if your central heating is on when you run your hot tap then that is just like having preheat on because obviously the boiler is already hot and when you turn your hot tap on the boiler is hot and it's not going to take long for the water to come out of your tap. So if you only use your water when your central heating is on, then you don't need preheat turned on. Now, not every combination boiler has this function called preheat, but you can see on this ideal boiler, there's a button there and it says preheat on it. And in the display, you can see there is some writing saying preheat and it says on. If you push the button, it then says off. So it's pretty straightforward on these ideal boilers. If you have the button on the front, you just need to press the button and look for the writing to say on and off. If it's on when you come to check it, then try turning it off and then see how it goes over a couple of days. If you don't like it, you can always just turn it back on again. Valiant boilers have had preheat on their boilers for absolutely years. They go back to the Turbomax range and even before that. Now, if you have the slightly older Valiant boilers where they have the dials on the front, it is really easy to accidentally turn the preheat on, which is what I find happens a lot of the time. People phone me and say, why is my boiler flashing up and it's coming on at funny times of the day and night? And it's because they've accidentally turned preheat on. Now, Valiant boilers call this function warm start or comfort. Obviously, the C standing for comfort. Now, to turn it on or off, you just use the hot water dial, but there's no markings on the dial to show that that's what you're doing. It only shows you in a display when there is a C in the display that you've turned it on. The older Turbomax boilers and the Ecotech Pro boilers, they have three LED lights. And the green light is for your hot water. And when it's permanently on, it means that preheat or warm start comfort is turned on. To turn the preheat function on, you turn the hot water dial all the way around to its hottest position. And then the green light will come on or the C will come up in the display. If you turn a hot water dial all the way around to its lowest position, that will turn off preheat. And then you just turn the dial back around to the temperature you want your hot water at. The new Valiant boilers with their digital displays, you need to press the button underneath the tap, which takes us to our hot water settings. We then press the button on the other side, that takes us to the comfort setting or preheat. You can see it says off in the display. We then press the plus or the minus button to change that setting. So there it changed it to on. It's then a case of pressing the tick to save that setting like that. Now it says on, that's locked in. We go back again and now you can see C is flashing in the display indicating that comfort is now on and it's going to preheat the boiler. It takes about two minutes for preheat to run its cycle. I'm going to speed this next clip up so you can see it in operation. Then in a couple of hours time the boiler will cool down a bit and then preheat is going to come back on and then warm it back up to 50 degrees. Hopefully you saw then that the temperature actually went up to 57 degrees before the flame actually went out. And now the pump's gonna stay running for a little while before it turns off and then waits for itself to cool down again. And this is the way all combination boilers run this preheat cycle. Worcester boilers are another manufacturer which have this preheat setting. Now they call it Eco and there's usually a button on the front of the boiler and then you need to press that button, hold it for about five seconds and then usually the button will light up saying Eco or it'll say it in the display. But what you're doing there is you're turning preheat off and making a boiler more efficient, hence the word Eco. Now, as you can see, every manufacturer is slightly different, so I can't cover every single boiler, but I have made other videos for different boilers, like for instance, the Glowum Energy that has an eco setting on it. And of course, you'll find that one down there. And also you can visit my website where I've categorized all my videos, so it will help you to find the video that you are looking for. So that was tip number eight, preheat. Right, we're getting towards the end now. So tip number nine, timers and programmers. Now the number of houses I go into where the timer or the programmer is not set 
is just unbelievable. Now hot water timers, now some combination boilers do have a timer so you can set that but if you have a traditional system where you have a hot water tank you don't want to be heating that up all day long. Again a number of houses which I go into where the hot water is on constant all day and all night being heated again is staggering. You don't want to be heating that tank up all through the day and all through the night. It's just not needed and you're wasting a whole heap of energy and gas by doing that. So what you should try and do is to set your hot water timer to come on half an hour to an hour before you want to use your hot water. And then set your timer to go off when you finish using your hot water. Or maybe leave it on a little bit longer if you want your hot water to stay hot all day. And then in the evening you can set the timer again to come on an hour before you're likely to need your water and then when you finish using it set the timer to go off again then. Now I regularly find that the hot water is set exactly the same as the central heating. So if your central heating comes on at say 4.30 in the afternoon and then goes up 10.30 at night regularly I find that that hot water is set exactly the same and there's absolutely no need to have your hot water on a modern system set to the same times as your central heating. You can set it for just an hour before you're going to use it. Use your hot water for a couple of hours whilst you're heating, having showers, families using the hot water and then turn it off again. And of course in the summertime you don't want the hot water on any more than you need to because it's just going to be making your house really hot and uncomfortable. And don't forget to set your central heating timer also. Obviously you set it to come on in the morning and go off in the morning and then come on in the evening and go off in the evening. Now there are all sorts of different timers, programmers, smart controls you can use with your mobile phone which are on the market now and obviously there's way too many for me to go through them all. But if you do need to find out how to use them then you can check my website because I may have made a video about your particular programmer. And you'll find a link to my website down below where all my videos are categorised you find links to all the products and parts that I recommend. Now one of the central heating programmers that I do recommend is the Honeywell T3R. Again link down below and of course that's a nice easy programmer to use a lot of my old folks like it because it's wireless they can take it up to bed with them and turn the heating off when they go to bed and then turn it back on before they get up and that makes it really nice and comfortable and efficient for them to use and one last thing at the end of the video I'll talk to you briefly about the Drayton Wiser Smart heating controls. Now I think they're probably going to be the future for controlling our central heating and our hot water in the future. So that was tip number nine, setting your programmers and your timers for your central heating and your hot water. And finally I've got to the end of it, tip number 10. Now this tip is for people who have a boiler that heats up their central heating and a large hot water tank. Now this isn't so much of a tip but more of a make sure. Now a lot of the modern heat only boilers have two controls on them, one for the central heating and one for the hot water. Now what I regularly find is that people think that the hot water dial is adjusting their hot water temperature. Now unless you have the special controls which go with that boiler, it's most likely that that hot water dial doesn't do anything at all. And so by adjusting it, you're not adjusting the hot water temperature. So I regularly find that people turn the hot water temperature up thinking they're doing that and they turn the central heating temperature down. And what you're doing actually is turning the temperature down that your boiler is running at. And so when you have your hot water on, the boiler never reaches the temperature the hot water is set to. And so you may find that your hot water is not hot enough. Now this is also a bad thing for your boiler because the boiler will never reach the temperature that the hot water is set to and so it will never turn off whenever the hot water is on. So it means that the boiler will be continuously cycling and running trying to get to the temperature that your hot water is set to which is then really inefficient for your boiler. So your boiler should always be set at a higher temperature than your hot water temperature which should be around about 65 degrees. So with a heat only boiler you can't set that temperature down lower like you can with a combination boiler. And that's why this is a tip because it's very inefficient to have a heat only boiler lower than the temperature of your hot water. So that was tip number 10, a bit of a brainstorming one. I hope you understood what I was trying to get across to you. But so yeah, that was it. If you've got a heat only boiler, make sure that it's not set below 65 degrees. 
Just a couple of last little tips for you. Another real simple, easy thing to do is when was the last time you dusted the bottom of your radiators? You'll be surprised at how much dust and maybe cobwebs build up on the bottom of your radiators. Just get your vacuum out, give them a suck, and that's gonna make the radiator more efficient because the air can then circulate through the radiator. Another little tip you could try doing is to put some insulation behind your radiators on the walls like this person's done here and that will make the radiator more efficient because the heat being radiated from the radiator isn't going into the wall, it's going to be reflected back into the room. If you've got pipes which are exposed and they get hot when your heating's on, you could put some insulation on them. And then if you've got loft tanks, then make sure though again that those are well insulated, although that's more for stopping from freezing in the winter. And if you've got pipes underneath your floors downstairs, then you can make sure that those are insulated also, although you would need to take your floorboards up and that's a bit more of a hassle to go checking that. But if you can, there's a really good place to save some energy because there's a lot of heat lost when pipes are underneath the floors. Another little tip is I regularly see people putting washing over the top of the radiators. If you have a convector radiator, that's ones with little fins inside, then if you put something on top of the radiator, it makes a radiator way less efficient because the air can't circulate it because a lot of the air goes in the bottom of the radiator and comes out the top. So if you do want to dry your washing, you're best off trying to get some of those little hangers where it hangs on the front of the radiator and then the washing is at the front and then the heat being radiated out is then drying the washing that posed to block in the top of the radiator. And that is, goes the same for anything else. If you've got ornaments or anything on top of your radiator, you want to try and keep your radiator top as clear as it possibly can. Now, one question I get asked all the time is, should I keep my heating on all day long or should I put it on a timer, which is more efficient? Now, in general, I would say that having your timer set is more efficient than keeping the heating on all day long. Now, the reason I say this is it doesn't take very long on a modern boiler for your house to heat up. Maybe half an hour, maybe an hour at the most if you've got an older property and your house is then up to temperature. And the boiler probably ran continuously while it was heating the house up. But if you want to keep your boiler on all day long, say normally it would go off at nine o'clock and then come back on at four o'clock. If you keep it on all day, that'd be seven hours. Now I'm pretty sure that if you run your heating all day long, the boiler's probably gonna run 10 minutes in every hour and maybe longer. And obviously you can see that if it comes on for 10 minutes in every hour, that's gonna be 70 minutes. If it's on for longer than that, that's definitely way longer than the boiler's gonna be on for than if it just comes on in the afternoon for that half hour period to warm your house up. And don't forget when it's going on and off, that's when it's at its least efficient and you're wasting gas every time it goes on and comes off. So we wanna reduce that cycle rate. It's called cycling and boiler manufacturers are always trying to reduce the amount the boiler would click on and click off. I hope that makes sense and has answered that question. Now finally, the future of our central heating. Now we all know what a smartphone is. Now you may or may not know you can now control your central heating with your smartphone. So when you're out and about, you can turn it on and you can turn it off and you can adjust the temperature of your heating. Now this could be really useful if you work funny shift patterns and you can never set a timer. Or maybe if you work away from home and you never know when you're gonna be back again. Or maybe you just wanna lie in bed or sit on your sofa and adjust your heating from there. But that only just turns your heating on and off. And I think for most people, it's not that useful. But now we have smart thermostatic radiator valves. With the Drayton Wiser system, we can now turn off individual radiators or whole groups of radiators with just a touch of a button from our phone. We can also use Alexa and Hey Google to control the heating. Now you may be saying, why is that useful? Well, it is incredibly useful. So for instance, you can have your central heating set to come on in the morning. You all get up, you get downstairs, you start having your breakfast, but now you can turn off upstairs and you can just have downstairs turned on whilst upstairs is off. And in effect, you're reducing your heating bill by half by just having downstairs turned on. And you can do that by using a timer or you could just do it from a touch of a button on your phone. So in the afternoon, you can do exactly the same. You can turn your heating on. You could have upstairs turned off and then downstairs turned on or just certain rooms turned on downstairs. 
You may be saying, I've got a child, they want to go and play in their room or they want to go in their room, they don't want to be downstairs with us. Well, you can just have their room come on and the others turned off. You can see there's an incredible amount of savings you can make by using these smart thermostats. Now, I have spoken to several people who have these systems fitting in their houses and they all have told me that they have reduced their gas bill by having this installed. Now, it doesn't matter whether you live in a big house or a small house, we all live to our means and we all want to try and reduce our heating bills. And it doesn't matter whether you've got radiators or underfloor heating or you're thinking of changing to a heat pump, you can still use this system with all of those. For the installers and the gas engineers, this Drayton Wireser system covers all the regulations needed for the Boiler Plus scheme brought in in 2018. So it does your smart weather conversation, it does your boiler load, it does your thermostat, it does your timer, it does your smart controls, and it does the zoning of the two areas if you've got a house over a certain size. So you can see it covers everything in one package. And because it's Drayton, they have been making heating controls what seems like forever. And it means the controls are nice and easy to use. It's good for the installer. And I know they are planning on bringing out a whole load of other smart controls to make your house even smarter. Now, Drayton sponsored me to make a video all about their Drayton Wiser system and their smart thermostatic radiator valves. It's pointed more towards the installer, but if you want to know more about these controls and how they can save you energy, then of course, find the link to that video in the description below. Right, that's about it then. So if you're watching this, it means that you've made it to the end and I'd like to say a really big thank you for sticking with me. And of course, I do hope the video has helped you to save some energy. You can click on my next video just here. You can click on that subscribe, ring the bell if you want to get a notification. And it's always my toolbox phone where you can get me a cup of coffee and of course, visit my website. Bye for now and I'll see you next time.